Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here, coming to you from central Wisconsin. This video is for July 24th, 2022. For the families and friends of St. Luke Lutheran Church and St. John Lutheran Church, what you're looking at here is one of my walls. Yeah, this is one of the walls in my office at one of my churches, and it's a bunch of pictures of Jesus. And uh, these are all done by a guy known as the Jesus Painter. He performs at uh, live events and does these paintings in anywhere from seven to, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so. And he does them on, on very large scale, you know, five feet by six feet kind of thing, uh, large scale canvases. And then he sells uh, prints of his paintings. And so these are all little eight by tens that I have up here. Um, he has been at several youth gatherings through the years, uh, the large gathering that my church body holds every three years. I just got back from one for this year. And anyway, um, he does this at these different ones, and each time I would buy two or three new prints as he added to his repertoire of artwork here. And so I put them up on my wall, and I got the shepherd staff right in the middle, a reminder that Jesus is a good shepherd. And so I just thought I would show that because it's a great focus for me when I turn and look at these, and I'm reminded of Jesus, my good shepherd, and my Savior. So thanks for watching this video. Please read the scripture passages that are listed on the next slide, and then I'll have a brief meditation about them, as well as prayers of the church. Thanks again for watching. My friends, if you did the readings, you might have seen something rather familiar, especially in that gospel lesson, huh? Yeah, Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer. Now, he did that on a couple of different occasions, and so the wording is a little bit different. There's one in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, um, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, so you can see that there. And then there is this version in Luke where he is asked, how should we pray or teach us to pray? And so he does, and he uses, again, a very similar wording to what he did with that sermon in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Um, and we see this on a numerous occasions, that Jesus, of course, is traveling all over the place. He's talking to all sorts of different groups of people, and so one would expect that he would indeed repeat himself and change things up here and there a little bit as he shared his message with people. But that prayer is in there in today's reading, and I hope... It's something that you use often. But don't let it get old. Um, don't let it get too routine for you. And by that I mean that you say it without really thinking about it. That, that you say the prayer without really praying it. You know what I mean? I mean, I can do that. I, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it. But in church services, I have on numerous occasions been saying the Lord's Prayer, saying it out loud, uh, leading the congregation in that prayer. And meanwhile, I've been able to sort of look ahead in the service or see what's going on, you know, make sure I don't forget this thing or make this announcement later or whatever it is. And so, yeah, my mind, my heart, they're not even engaged in the prayer. I'm just mouthing the words. And I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's what we want to do, uh, what we want to do when we pray. No, not, not at all. We want ourselves to be engaged. We want to have our mind and our heart in on that whenever we pray. And so that's why I say, certainly pray the Lord's Prayer. Jesus did tell us to do that. But don't let it become empty words as well. Continue to pray it in a meaningful way. Because God does listen. He does hear our prayers and he does answer according to his will. Now the answer isn't always what we want. Sometimes it is yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's wait. Many times our prayers are answered by God with something altogether more than we asked for. And uh, that's always a fun thing to see, huh? I like the Old Testament lesson today as well because Abraham is talking to God uh, which is essentially what prayer is, isn't it? It's chatting with God, talking with him. Or is that not how you think of prayer? I, I just said chatting with God. That's probably not the way we usually think of it. No, it's usually very solemn and reverent and, and well, you do it in church, right? 
you got to say the right words, don't you? Well, yes and no. I, I certainly, we want to be solemn and reverent in, in appropriate ways when we're praying, when we're worshiping. But I also believe that prayer is just that, a chat with God on occasion. We don't have to have these big flowing flowery words. Rather, it's simply what's on our heart. Whether it's praise and thanksgiving or confession of sins. Sorry, God, I didn't, I shouldn't have done that. I know I'm wrong. Forgive me. Or maybe it's, Lord, please help. Help somebody I love who's hurting. Uh, help me through this issue I'm dealing with. Help some financial problems or sickness or, or whatever it is. We can share those things with God. I once got into an argument with somebody. Well, maybe argument's a strong word. Uh, we disagreed on the topic of prayer. I was leading a class in uh, prayer about what does the Bible say and show about prayer. And I made the comment that I think it's okay to pray to God for anything, about anything. Perhaps the one exception is, God, let me get away with sin. Okay, that's yeah, that's not a good prayer. But... I think it's okay to pray, and, and the examples I used at that time were for a parking space near the front, you know, because I got to get in the hospital or I got to get in the store or whatever. Please let me have a, a decent space so I can do that quickly. Or help me find my keys um, or whatever, you know, even things that seem so trivial. I think it's okay to pour those out to God in, in prayer as well. And this other person disagreed with me and said, I think those are too insignificant for God. I don't think God wants to to deal with our trivialities in life, not silly things like car keys and parking spaces and whatever. And I said, well, I, I disagree with you on that. I think that God wants us to deal with him on everything. In fact, the way I would say it is I'm going to pray about everything and I'll let God decide what's too trivial or insignificant for him. In the Bible, we see God talking to his people and, and people talking to him in prayer having conversations with them, and they do indeed talk about all sorts of different things. Now, of course, much of it is, I guess, what we, may, what we might call ministry-related, right? How should I deal with this situation, God? What should I do with these people or this problem or whatever? Um, or like today's lesson, Abraham is essentially, what would you say, bargaining with God? Um, <laughs> He's, he's kind of trying to hammer out a business deal or something. And he keeps saying, you know, okay, what if 10 less people are okay? Can we, you know, would you destroy a city for 10 less? Oh, no, okay, I won't. And, and they go back and forth on this. And I just love that. I love that Abraham, and, and it's a very serious issue. It's not something trivial, trivial of course, because he's talking about the lives of, of these people in these towns. But I love that Abraham goes back and forth with God on this. And that he's doing it for the good of others, but he's doing it like he's chatting with a friend, talking with a neighbor. He's, well, he's doing what God wants us to do, I think, isn't it? That we should pray to him and pour out the things that are on our heart, whether that's trivial things or not, whether that's angry things. I mean, read some of the Psalms, folks. There are some angry people in the Psalms, okay? And they're just letting it all out to God. And you know what? God is big enough to take it. Yeah, he can handle it. The key is that we're going to God. That we don't, even in our anger, even in, in the trivial moments of life, we don't ignore God or just leave him out of it. No, that's why I say we want to bring everything to him in prayer. To have essentially an ongoing conversation all day long as we go about our, our business, go about our day. Jesus in the Lord's Prayer mentions all these different aspects of our lives. Our relationship with God, that is, he's our Father. Our relationship with other people, the whole forgiveness business of being forgiven and sharing forgiveness. And then, of course, our daily needs with that daily bread thing. Oh, and keep us from evil, okay? Don't let us fall into temptation. And let us hallow your name that is to honor you and all that we say and do and and yeah he just covers all these different parts of our lives in his prayer and i think that's pretty much how we should be praying all the time with all the different parts of our lives we ask that god would hear us whatever it is that's on our heart that we would let him know and we would do so knowing fully confident that he is listening
that he hears our prayers, that he cares about us, and that he will act according to his loving and gracious will. And, well, maybe if it's too trivial for him, that's up to him to decide. But I'm going to keep praying to him about all sorts of things. Whether it's the game, let my team win, let my child do well, help that person perform to their highest, whatever it is. Or if it's something very, very serious, like a health issue, or somebody's marriage, or my own issues that I'm dealing with. Whatever it is, let's bring those things to God regularly, daily, constantly. Because he does invite us to talk to him, and he does listen. He listened to our greatest need, one that we didn't even know we had, when he sent Jesus to die for us. That was the greatest thing that we needed was forgiveness of sins so that we could even approach his throne again, that we could be with him in heaven forever. And he did just that, the thing we needed, that's what he did by having Jesus sacrifice himself on the cross. And then, of course, he gave us life, life eternal by raising Jesus from the dead. Again, the things that we needed and the things that he desired for us because he wants us to be with him forever. So don't wait until heaven. Don't wait until later to be with him. Be with him now. Talk with him in prayer each and every day, knowing that he does love you so, so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we are grateful that we can come to you in prayer and that you promise to hear and answer the desires of our heart. We ask, Lord, that our desires would be in keeping with your will and that you would carry out your will in our lives for our good and for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for all your gifts to us, especially the gift of forgiveness and life that we have in Jesus, our good shepherd. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are hurting, those who are lonely, those who are sick, those who are dealing with depression and living through some difficult times. We ask, Lord, that you grant them the healing, the comfort, the peace that only you can give and use us as instruments of your love to them. Lord, we pray also for those who celebrate from our churches. We pray for Carrie Wilsman, Jeff Peasley, Stephen Hetsey, Sarah Butke, Dennis and Kathy Sievers, Lynn Schill, Vicki Rogney, Mark and Susan Tremel, Sue Cousy, Chase and Amy Biederman, Josh and Jennifer Weiler, Barb Hafes, Michelle Strobel, Jeff Katzenberger, and Sean and Kaya Cherney. Remind them of your love each day, Lord, and let them rejoice in your gifts to your glory. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who lead us, that is, in our country, in our churches, in our jobs, wherever we deal with people in authority. We pray, Lord, that you grant them wisdom and allow them to have humble hearts as they serve you and your people. Lord, we are grateful for all your gifts to us, and we ask that you would continue to bless us and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, my friends, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope it has got you thinking. Well, actually, I hope it's got you praying. I hope it has you praying for the things that are on your heart. And I'm going to go ahead and make a bold request here. Please pray for me, okay? Pray for good health. Pray for good attitude. Pray that I would do what God wants me to do. Pray that I would use the gifts and talents and skills that he has given me for his glory. And that I would do my best, give my all to do that. So please do pray for me, for yourself, for others in your life. Talk to God. Let him know what's going on because he does want to hear it. And he does love you so, so much. Thanks again, my friends. God's peace be with you always.